From Snoke's untimely death to the return of Palpatine, Star Wars has been a bit of a mess under Disney's reign. So, here's everything they need to do to fix it. First, the franchise needs a better vision. I mean, is that even a question at this point? We've all seen just how messy things get toward the end of the sequel trilogy. We had so many retcons and U-turns that it almost gave everyone a whiplash. Sure, The Force Awakens wasn't bad when it came out, but it's not like it was riffing off of original ideas either. It was, more or less, a direct rehash of A New Hope. Though, after that, no one knows what went down. Ryan Johnson had his own ideas, which, despite being daring and bold, a lot of people didn't like. And then, boom, Disney pulled the emergency switch to bring J.J. Abrams back for Episode 9. The whole trilogy was this disjointed mess that jumped between wildly different themes. Unlike other Star Wars media with similar problems, however, this one didn't work at all. Instead, it sort of tarnished the franchise's reputation, so much so that Disney had to literally stop making movies for a while. Oh, and that film drought persists even to this day, as they've been focusing on TV shows instead. Hence, first things first, we need a consistent plan, or at least an idea of what the plan is going to be, before diving headfirst into another trilogy disaster. After all, the OG trilogy only worked with last-minute changes because it was George Lucas doing it alone. So, if you're gonna get Ryan Johnson in for a trilogy, you better stick with his ideas. That said, A Vision wasn't the only issue with the sequels. In fact, ambiguous mysteries played an even bigger role in the franchise's downfall. Seriously, just look at the abundance of stuff we got introduced to in The Force Awakens. First, you've got this new villain, Snoke. Oh, and guess what? No one knows what his deal is. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure even J.J. Abrams didn't really know where the guy came from. He was there, and he was bad, and that was it. Not to mention Rey's parentage was also this weird mystery that everyone was hyper-focused on for a while. And then it was up to Ryan to explain all that stuff. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with introducing a bunch of mysteries in your first movies. Honestly, I'd go as far as to say that this whole shtick from JJ works quite well. But again, these things need to have substance. I mean, you can't just introduce a super important character and not have a backstory in mind. This is literally how we got to that Snoke death, which left us without a villain in Episode 9. Besides, if you have to pull the Palpatine resurrection switch, then something's definitely gone wrong. So, if Disney is serious about making another trilogy, it needs to ensure that the characters, and especially the villains, have a solid backstory. Plus, they need to go easy on the mysteries too. After all, when you've got a billion unresolved plot points in a movie, then the sequel's bound to be an unsatisfying mess when everything unravels. Though, you could argue that there's one thing that's got an even greater hand in the franchise's failure, the Skywalker legacy. Now, this is a debate that's been raging on for years at this point. After all, in many ways, Star Wars is the Skywalker story. But at the same time, this is also one of the biggest limiting factors of the franchise. You see, while George Lucas created these iconic characters and planned their whole lineage with the prequels, there needs to be a point where we move on. And honestly, the sequels had a pretty good chance of doing so. Sure, we needed that passing the torch moment. At the same time, however, it seems like the torch hasn't actually been passed. In fact, even to this day, we continue seeing cameos in TV shows that, frankly, are just nostalgia bait. Not to mention, even Episode 9 finished with Rey calling herself a Skywalker. Ray Skywalker. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it just sets a precedent of over-reliance on these characters. Almost as if Star Wars can't exist without the Skywalker lineage. Though, obviously, shows like Ondor have proven that we don't need iconic legacy characters to make the galaxy far, far away an interesting place. And this, perhaps, leads to an even more important point that needs to be addressed. The actual size of the Star Wars universe. I mean, this has been the biggest issue, hasn't it? Even though the franchise exists in an entire galaxy, it doesn't feel anywhere near as big. In fact, if anything, it feels smaller than even some of the more grounded sci-fi stuff. Seriously, how come everyone just keeps going to Tatooine of all places? Are we really running out of planets? Not to mention, it's wild that, out of the hundreds of Jedi to have survived through Order 66, The time has come. Execute Order 66. 
We've only really seen about a dozen of them. But again, it's not even about the Jedi. It's about the universe as a whole. Characters, locations, and even stories. Everything feels so confined. And this should never be the case for a series that's literally called Star Wars. And you could even bring tone into this. After all, we've all seen just how successful a tonal shift can be with a series like Andor. The point is that there's so much potential to expand this universe and bring all those amazing extended canon stories into the movies or TV shows as well. Not to mention, exploring different eras and not sticking to just one band of characters can open things up a lot too. Though, there is some indication that a lot of that work is already happening behind the scenes. After all, Disney has greenlit a bunch of new Star Wars projects. For instance, Ryan Johnson's got a trilogy on the back burner that's apparently built upon the same ideas. As a matter of fact, he's gone as far as to say that it's going to feature new characters from a corner of the galaxy that Star Wars lore has never explored before. That being said, no one really knows when that one's going to come out. And to be fair, that's been the case for the majority of Star Wars movies, as Disney's been focusing on TV shows instead. Now, they have been pretty successful as of late, you know, with Andor. And even Obi-Wan Kenobi. Anakin's gone. I am what remains. But the real challenge will be bringing that success to the cinema, which continues to be the series' Achilles' heel. Is there any hope for the future, though? And what does 2023 look like for Star Wars? Well, we might see the start of something special for the franchise this year. For one, The Mandalorian is going to continue being great, and Ahsoka is probably going to please a lot of people, too. Though you could say that both these shows still suffer from the whole small galaxy problem still. With that said, we do have Taika Waititi's Star Wars movie in the works right now. Plus, Acolyte is shaping up to be special too. In fact, this could be the thing that changes the franchise's fortunes, as it's set 200 years before the prequels. So, no known characters or places. However, if you feel frustrated by Disney's lack of direction when it comes to the Star Wars films, you're gonna have to wait for a little while longer. Because YTT's movie hasn't even started filming yet. And he's also coming off of a mixed reception with Thor Love and Thunder. But hey, the fact that everyone's been pointing issues out for all almost a decade would have at least had some effect in terms of guiding them, right? Well, that's all we can hope for anyway. On that note, these were some of the things that Disney needs to address in order to fix Star Wars. See you in the next one.